a lot of uh, discussion. So the first one is Dirk, Dirk on searching in the uh, smart city with a question mark. So take it away, please. Great, thanks a lot. Um, nice to be here. Unfortunately, I'm uh, not locally there. I see you have very nice weather and brilliant pictures on Twitter. So I'm going to do this remotely. Um, my name is Dirk. I work at NTNU, which is Norwegian University of Science and Technology, which is in Trondheim in Norway. Uh, you see that in my background and I have a nicer picture in the slides as well. Um, I work in the Smart Sustainable Cities Group, which is in kind of an interdisciplinary group hosted at the Department of Architecture, but my background is in computer science and we try to do very multidisciplinary projects around smart cities, uh, around urban planning, around ICT, so combining these different items. And uh, what I'm presenting today is uh, a short paper uh, that came out of some thoughts around how we do search if smart city needs anything special um, that has been <clears throat> percolating a bit for a while. So uh, that's why the question mark is there, searching in the smart city. What should we do? Does it make sense? Uh, is it something specific um, from kind of an information access perspective? Um, and again, this is more a, a very short position paper with some questions and maybe some of you will also have some answers later on, which would be really nice. So I'm also kind of testing the idea on you. Um, just this is the nicer picture of uh, autumn in Trondheim, um, which also has a lot of smart city items here. Um, there are a lot of individual bits and pieces, but the question of whether the city is smart, you can't really see it on this side. It's a lot about systems, about hidden systems, about some things that are physical, some things that are online. So really a combination of everything, plus also some decent planning, green spaces, all these items. Um, and for the presentation today, the guiding question is, why is there no smart city search engine? Or maybe there's some we don't know about it. Do we need one? Uh, and how would one look like? Is it something that we need new? Is it something that's already existing and just needs to be made better accessible? Um, so kind of what are the challenges there? Uh, what are opportunities, requirements? What about integration? How do we bring these things together? Um, and this is not so easy, so I can write a lot about it. I don't have a very clear idea yet how something would look like. So even requirements engineering for this is a bit difficult. Um, to kind of anchor this a bit in some uh, of the work we are doing on overall uh, computer science work on ICT integration in smart cities on city strategies, um, what we would like, which is not necessarily always the, the reality is to use smart city as an approach for open ecosystems. So not too siloed and also not only driven by municipalities, but by having an open approach to work with, to have new players come and do something. A lot of the smart city systems or services that we look at might not be coming from the municipality. There might be something that comes by global player, by someone locally, by startups, um, where the municipality is maybe facilitating or just getting out of the way. So it's not just about public systems, it's about all these other things that kind of make the city livable, make service offers there. Um, and then the issue is about integration and combination. So if we get kind of an, a large scale architecture perspective, where do we even, do we even need the city to come in? Uh, where do we need common data storage or data processing units? How, where do we need to exchange data even in a formalized way? Can we have things running on their own? Um, and then uh, the larger approach is enabling urban change, uh, enabling more sustainability, and hopefully something like livable urban futures. There are quite a lot of sub points here. I don't need to go through all of these, but the point is mostly uh, it should be something that makes the city nicer and more livable for the people that are living there. So I try to not say citizens too much because it's also tourists, it's other people that go through quite a lot of systems go on citizens and then if you're not a citizen a lot of services don't work or are not accessible i can't count how many times i couldn't take a bus because the app doesn't work on my foreign phone or something like that um, so scalable and transferable solutions are important uh, and the combination of low and high tech solutions so it's integrated it's not only ict uh, you can have beautiful sensors nailed to everything if 
but when planning is wrong, you will still not like the place where you are then living or forced to pass through. Um, and then on services and data side, there's a long list here. Some of the some of the ones are the obvious, like public services, specific city services for citizens, but also general service discovery, general local search, um, location based services, a lot of things on tourist search. Or there's a lot of tourist recommendations. Actually, there is something on mobility. Um, how does public transport work, which is al always also kind of the first contact you have with how the city works or how it's run. Um, there are more things here. I will go through all of them in detail. But it's this is also just kind of scratching the surface of kind of the obvious candidates that are there. Um, yeah, how do we find all these? How do we make sense of that? Can we search them? Are they searchable in a, in a meaningful way? And do we have the right data sources for that? And then um, for the question, what is smart city search? Do we need it? What could be part of that? Um, a lot of information is online and it's available in usual search engines. I can't find restaurants. I can find out where the city office is or if they have online services. Hopefully I can even find the online services online because they are public and they are not hidden behind a login wall, which only allows me then to navigate, but I don't have really search in a lot of services. So. Um, this is also the question, how much do, do we expect? What is our expectation? And our expectations get higher and higher because so much is online and a lot of the search engines work well to find that stuff. Um, but then also again, making life easier, making sustainable living easier. How does that work? How do we get access to existing systems and services and also to new ones? There are new things coming up all the time. How are you aware of that? How does it uh, join into the rest of things you do. Um, and then it's back to integrating over different systems or over different ecosystems. So the individual services work well, but we also want some of them really integrated because they become much more valuable or otherwise they are useless. Some others work in individual services if they are individually designed good enough and they are kind of searchable by the normal access modes. And then the other large part of the back end of that, uh, the data side is all that needs to be findable and accessible. So we expect that it's open on the web, that maybe it has an app, but also that it has some APIs so it can be built into other services as well. Um, and again, what I said before that the services should be public and open and accessible as far as possible, not hidden behind paywalls, not hidden um, by something that is a proprietary format that's not machine readable. Um, one, one simple example is to try to see if how you can take a bus in a city. Some places you have wonderful route planners from the mobility provider themselves that help you to do route planning from wherever you are. It works perfectly. Um, in some cases, these are integrated, so you can go to Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever else you want to, and they are already integrated there. They are machine readable. They have agreements. You can use that even without you uh, without leaving your normal search engine. But in other cases, it goes down to, if you're lucky, there's a one PDF of all the routes of the buses on the web page of the bus company, if it exists. And you have to figure out yourself if the routes connect and how you can get from A to B, because this is completely not accessible. And we often think this is solved, but it's far from being solved kind of in the broad distribution. So a lot of data is not available really online in a way that's machine readable or that's just integratable into the other services into kind of the search we expect. So that's also a lot of things that, that still need to be done and that need to be made accessible. And then the kind of the result of this would be something also more scenario based search, um, integrated searches. So, for example, I can search for a bar, I can go to something else and look for public transport. But something here, if I, uh, if I were now maybe in Italy, something like I need a bar that has a gin tonic, that has a public transport to get me safely home in the evening. And, and also, I wanted to have a view to something nice, either to the fjord or to the river or to a nice view, I don't know yet. That is, this is very location based, which also I've done a lot of work, but also this is not easily done yet. So this is 
kind of the, the background and the idea and also the challenge of the question. And uh, I kind of mapped out a, a few of the topics and the keywords here again, um, which is basically what I just said. The one part is just to, uh, to highlight again is the integration between systems, the cross domain part and uh, the handling of all this complexity that is there. And I think the scenario based approaches are quite interesting and valuable in addition to search results, a single just single result, anything like that. Um, with that, I'm also at the end of the time. So this is, uh, I think it's a challenging and interesting scenario. Uh, there are very nice opportunities in there, but how to do that is still a bit open. And for that, um, I would like to hear your questions, but maybe also your answers to my question. <laughs> so thanks a lot. And yeah. Thank you very much. Just from you. We'll have a few minutes for questions. I do have some questions, but I'm going to ask the audience if we got any questions. Online and obviously offline. So I'm going to kick off. I'm going to ask you, Dirk. Um, this seems like a cool idea, but do you think kind of a popular cities are going to take over versus your little small place? Because if you think this is kind of the inverse of page rank, maybe we want to democratize all the locations in your country, not to be sorted by popularity, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Uh, this is also like, where, where does this even happen? Uh, some things might be specific to one city, but a lot of it is more the concept of how to integrate this, which should be something that applies to a lot of cities. Uh, we all have roughly similar needs on at least on the high level um so i think there is something to explore this as a concept it doesn't necessarily need to be a complete new small prototype it can be integrated into other parts uh but that's also kind of part of the question so uh good point <laughs> i've thought about that i didn't put it in yet because i also don't have a good answer and i was running out of space cool um laura Go ahead, you have a question. If not, I can repeat that and then I go to follow. Can you, I'm not sure. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, so I think my main question was in, I mean, you, you're pointing at that a lot of data is hidden behind like a search wall or something like that, or hidden in a PDF. But then what makes smart city search different from just a search behind all these search masks? Like, is, it, is that the only problem that you have or is there really something fundamentally different about smart city search? Excellent question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Just to repeat the question. Um, from the uh, yeah, uh, is there, the question was, is there something fundamentally different in smart city search to the normal search or to other systems that are there? Um, I think the, the large part is on the integration, which is also happening more and more in the common search engines. More gets uh, gets integrated there, which does cool stuff that wasn't possible before. It's not just on the data side. I think this kind of how to integrate services in ways that we haven't thought about yet, or making use of the new data and the new services that come up. Um, but it it's probably not going to be like a specific search engine, but it might be a specific mode or it might be a specific understanding of different scenarios. If you're looking at, uh, if you're, for example, if you're looking at things as a tourist, if you're looking at things as a local citizen, you will have different needs in terms of, do you need to interact with the city as a municipality or with the city as a cool place to be? So, but I think it's a good question and this is uh, something to, to, to work on a bit more, but it's not necessarily that this must be a separate system. It might totally be that that makes no sense. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Fabio <laughs> if he has a question. Hi. Um, I was wondering if the problem that you're dealing with are um, with respect to city scale independent, meaning uh, equally solvable, equally applicable, equally uh, complex for very small city as opposed to big city. And what happened with cities becoming bigger and bigger? You know, are they going to be 
too big, let's say, for some of these problems, uh, for, for especially for the solutions that you're proposing? Thanks, that's a good observation. It might even be the other way around. In some cases, the large cities have a lot of work already running. If you, if you look to places like London, Paris, Rome, Barcelona, they have a strong need for a lot of very clever services uh, also on just running the city. So they are much more advanced. They have much more advanced systems where you can get more interesting data out. But in other cases, also in, sm in, smaller, in smaller places, in smaller cities, you might not have that much available because also the problem might not be quite there, or of course also it's a funding problem. So I think a lot of this should scale across if you have sufficient data available, which is a problem, kind of where do we get the data to begin with to build something like this. Okay. But I think I was. More I think I think it's not it's not one single scale. It's for different for different parts of this. Different scales might apply, and they might invert in some places. That actually you get better information or better services in smaller places as well. Okay. Although for big city, I was thinking more like Wuhan, Tokyo, Beijing. You know, scale that is uh, for which Barcelona is a is a neighborhood basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, we're uh, working a lot with European cities, so there we're also working with a lot of small places that are then really small. But if you look at really the mega cities, um, there is also a lot of work there on making the city administration or the, the running of the cities, the kind of public services, smarter to just be able to cope. And there is still something that uh, to you might have more information out there to make this more accessible in the end, because a lot of these things might be really interesting, but they are running in the back end of running the city, but they are not publicly available yet. But some of, some of these are the front runners because they just have uh, enormous resources, really a strong need to do very data-driven solutions. And that might spill over into uh, then something more uh, citizens and user-oriented. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dirk. We are going to thank Dirk and Jimmy. You're next.